I'm Scott L. Miller. It is Saturday, the 5th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. I am in Ciudad Sandino, Managua, and on today's show, I am going to be simply showing you some real estate, not the interiors, just the exteriors, here in Ciudad Sandino. I am in, I have shown this a little bit in the past, uh, but it's been a long time. We have a lot of new viewers, and I've got some things I really want you guys to see. So what we're going to do today is um, I'm in a gated community. Now, let's talk a little bit about so first of all it's saturday i'm just gonna give you because like nothing's going on came down last night did some uh went out to dinner and partying here in managua you can see that on yesterday's update hola and um uh nothing much to report today is very chill the original plan is i had a bunch of events going on today that i was going to go do and i was meeting with someone in uh in managua tomorrow morning for breakfast can't do that stuff uh, tomorrow is a bunch of stuff going on in the country, and it's the one day of the year that it is recommended that uh, as foreigners, we just it's not one day a year, one day every several years, it is recommended that foreigners not make themselves um, out in public too much. So we're going to be heading out to the beach, and, and, and like we're worried that there's not like buses running. We're not actually like worried about anything, right, just to be clear, but it's advised that you just stay home and chill or go somewhere. And because we live in a very active, little barrio. Uh, we think it's best if we um, head out to the beach because we can, because we have our own place at the beach. There's no reason not to just go to our own place and chill and enjoy a day at the beach and, and solve all the problems. And then we have people to feed us. We don't have to worry about food. We don't have to worry about anything, right? So that is our plan. We're going to go stay there. So because of that, because we don't know if the buses are going to be running, I can't go back Sunday morning and I can't stay and do events in Managua on Sunday like I was planning. So I can't stay here tonight because the buses stop running relatively early, normally about six o'clock. So I need to get back to Leon tonight. Um, so that's changing all of our plans. So that's why I'm here and why it doesn't make any sense. Um, so the uh, uh, day this morning, very relaxing. I'm just chilling in Ciudad Sandino, gonna head in and I am told there's this amazing place for brunch. I hope to bring you guys along in uh, Managua proper. I wanna get a late lunch there and then just grab the bus back, the UCA bus, the University of Central America Terminal bus back to Leon, where we'll hang out this evening and then head to the beach. So that's why there's nothing going on. I'm just in Ciudad Sandino chilling. But now that we're here, that is my day. Now that we're here, um, this is an area that I really want to show because one, Ciudad Sandino is a really interesting city. We've talked about it before, but it is a suburb or a neighboring city of Managua. It is part of the Managua Metroplex. So we consider it part of the city. I don't know how to get really good light without blowing out the... And um, it was built following the earthquake, the big earthquake in the 1970s. This was a new city built to take a lot of the refugees from the capital, just, just down the road. Um, because so many houses have been destroyed. So this is a very modern city from a, from a building standpoint, like it was built recently. And it's not a really big population, but it's fairly dense. It's on the west side of Managua as you on, and it's, it's, it sits south of the old Leon Road and north of the new Leon Road going to Leon. So if you're coming from Leon or going to Leon, you almost always do some amount of going through Ciudad Sandino. Um, and it sits basically on the lake. So it's actually in a pretty good position for a lot of things, but it's on the opposite side of the airport. There is nothing touristy here whatsoever, and it often gets a bad rap. Um, I like it a lot. I like how inexpensive it is. I like the weather here. I like the access to the lake, the access to Managua, and the easy access to go out to Leon. If you're coming to her from Leon, so one of the reasons why I'm here is that this is quite a bit short of going to downtown Managua and doesn't deal with any of the traffic. I literally get off the bus uh, up at uh, Cuesta El Plomo, which is on the, the south side of Ciudad Sandino, and I just walk into Ciudad Sandino. I don't need a taxi. I don't need to deal with anything. I don't even need to go into the terminal. It's several, many stops short of the, the final destination. So it makes us really close to Leon and so convenient to get in and out and uh, sits right on the main roads. So I like Ciudad Sandino for those reasons. You're not going to find hotels here. You're not going to find people talking about coming here to visit. Uh, this is a place where people live. This is a bedroom community, and it is very, very nice. What is popular to do here is have gated communities, and that's what I'm going to show you, because if, if any of my viewers are looking at Ciudad Sandino or interested in something like this, this is, to me, what real Nicaragua is like. It's not colonial. It's not some historic living museum like Granada and Leon. It is not um, up in the mountains, which is really cool, but that's not the major population. The main population of Nicaragua is in the lowlands, 
in and around the capital district and this is an extremely authentic not living in a colonial area not living in um, something special this is just normal everyday city living suburbs are not a big thing here this is a kind of in between it's more of just extended city and it's an absolutely interesting beautiful location so i'm going to go off camera and start walking around just so you guys can see what a community like this looks like so this is first of all this is a gated community so uh it's not incredibly secure but every entrance into this community involves an actual human security guard who has to open a gate for you whether you're on foot or in a car so while yes they're not going to interrogate every person coming in and someone could sneak in it is very hard for someone to sneak in and rob you or mug you or do anything really nefarious Yes, if someone really wanted to sneak in and steal something, there's the potential to do so, uh, but it, it's very hard and uh, you're, you're quite extremely safe here. Lots of animals out and about, you know, people's dogs and cats, because there's very, very little traffic and kids play out front all day long. And of course the Nicaragua lifestyle is one to be outside. So a lot of times um, houses are wide open. The windows are open, the doors are open. People sit out in their yards uh, and hang out. The kids just play outside. The animals come and go um, often between neighbors' houses just because they like to visit each other, which is a really cool um, animal culture thing and a lot of these really beautiful houses there's a lot of great landscaping and uh, plants and house designs um, hola <laughs> and uh, it really is now there there's a, a lawn mowing crew going through we've just come out of the rainy season we're just going into uh, summer here so there's a lot of overgrowth these are interesting how these have gone through the windows um, i can only imagine someone's not living here this is way too overgrown um, but maybe maybe they are and this is they just haven't taken care of it i can't imagine um but <clears throat> it's so there's a lot of growth so they're going through mowing right now during most of the year the the lawns are pretty manicured uh but it's a beautiful community um these are generally smaller houses so this is not this is not a ritzy community this is not where you'd come normally as an expat there are no expats living here absolutely none uh and there's lots of communities like this this is not a special community in any way that's not the point that the really the point of this video is this is an extremely typical Nicaraguan uh, community in uh, where, where you're outside of the city center. This is what people are building when they have the opportunity to build for themselves rather than having to work around, say, a colonial design, which is the point of Leon and Granada. Everything we do there has to match the city um, traditionally. And it, while that's beautiful and important, it's not what people would choose in many cases for a brand new house. They're often not all that practical. They were quite practical given Spanish colonial architectural requirements and needs of the time. Um, but today there's, there's just many different things that can be done. In case you're wondering, these things are, uh, see if I can point to it correctly. It's in the shades. So it's very hard for me to see on my tiny screen, but that is a garbage, uh, garbage bag holder. Um, so it's meant for when you bring a garbage bag out of the house, you just put it in that and then the trash crew grabs it out of there. And the reason that they have those are very popular in Nicaragua is because of these little barky things. You may see these, this is the, this is the wild Nicaraguan canine. They, uh, they roam in packs and they love to rip open garbage bags. And so if you don't do that, if you leave garbage on the ground, it's going to end up all over the ground, even if you put it out in a bag. And that's why you see so much loose garbage in Nicaragua is because of the dogs going through and ripping things open, not because people are dumping garbage on the street. Um, and it's something that some places have dealt with. And so that's a popular, so you will see those um, and may think nothing of it. Um, and it's not meant for public trash. I'm sure you could, like no one's gonna stop you, but it is actually meant to keep the dogs out of their trash before the trash crew comes around and picks it up, which just came through minutes ago. So there's no trash out. But this is absolutely normal Nicaragua. This is the exact expectation you would have if you are familiar with Nicaragua and you're looking for um, probably lower to regular middle class living. These are very affordable. Um, a house in a community like this starts traditionally at $25,000. Now keep in mind, that, so first of all, this is what's called a lotification and or a lotification, um, which is exactly what it sounds like, a thing that has been lotified or to divide it into lots. 
Uh, so those are going to be more expensive than open land because you're paying for uh, that privilege of smaller space, but with everything uh, uh, organized and designed. But at $25,000, that includes your lot. So that's all built into the price and a small two bedroom, one bath house. Now, if you're looking at larger houses, three bedrooms, one bath, three bedrooms, two bath, uh, some of these, I think uh, probably four is the largest in a community like this. Um, if you want certain amenities, uh, then they're going to get more up into the 35 or even $40,000 range. Uh, but it would be, it'd be very unlikely to find prices going uh, much beyond $40,000 simply because of what 25 gets you right now if you were going to get a double lot perhaps uh, you could start getting a bit more expensive but that's a really important um, point of pricing to kind of understand when you're uh, looking at different properties around the country when you're looking at um, building costs and different things the lot plus construction and this one's good you can kind of see all the way around you can see how deep they are these are not large of course but you don't need large remember that this is a living outside culture so and and you say that and, and of course americans are like well when i get there i'm not going to do that that's i mean that may be true but it's rarely true here's another one of the garbage lifts and typically what we see is when americans or canadians come here they pretty quickly one just see everyone living outside but it's also the weather it's also how houses are designed it's how the neighborhoods are designed everything is designed to encourage you to go outside and enjoy the consistent weather you may not like how warm it is but it is consistent and you will get used to whatever it is and generally want to be outside maybe not as much as someone who grew up here but you will want to be outside way more than you probably anticipate and that's pretty important and you can see lots of outdoor living where you can see it uh, and so when you're here traditionally you're going to find that most people actually need far less interior space in their houses than they expect before they come now if you live in an enclave and you completely separate yourself from nicaragua you will probably find that you create a lifestyle along with a few neighbors that isolates you you from that and you may need the same space that you had somewhere else that is realistic and does happen to people but if you're looking at a community like this uh, in any way shape or form um, it's important to, to really realize that the chances that you're going to want to spend all of your time with the doors locked and air conditioning on and watching tv and never going outside is probably pretty low that's not why you came here um, presumably i mean maybe but chances are you wanted to participate in the culture and that's going to be open your doors open your windows get a breeze crack a beer sit outside and and hang out with the neighbors uh or go out right go out grab a taxi go do something um and that's what people do people are constantly coming and going because it's just go out go places that's the culture and so everything's built around that and that means your house just doesn't need to be as big plus when you're cooling by uh fresh air you want it to be relatively small so that the air can move through the house quickly you don't want it to hold on to too much heat and if you're going to do air conditioning which most people do not especially here in ciudad sandino because the air is pretty fresh we're right off the lake um, but if you did hola if you did want to have air conditioning then again you want a small house because the air conditioning can cool it down that much faster uh, keep in mind not central air anywhere down here it's in theory you could put it in but it's not what people do it's always split units and you do it by room so you can cool by zone you cool your bedroom while you sleep living room while you're awake whatever but i'm going to point out this is a purchased as a house but converted to a pulperia on the corner so i'm sure people do live there but it's also where you can buy drinks and things here without leaving your gated community so if you had little kids and you wanted to be able to send them to the store you could easily have a six or seven year old and feel comfortable with just sending them out to go pick up a soda or a, some chips or something there is a super mini right across the street from a super express from the community but you wouldn't want little kids crossing the road on their own but you can see how few cars are here everyone's watching out for each other this is a takes a village to raise a child kind of place another one of the garbage things and a cat and uh, uh so very very safe to have kids just wandering around um, and 
even in the US, it's much safer for kids to be out in public than we think uh, due to um, <laughs> fake news from the 1980s that convinced Americans that children were being abducted everywhere, but especially here, it is extremely safe out for kids. You do not have to worry. You ever, even in the middle of Leon, there are bands of roving children in the seven to 10 year old range all over the city, just going out and doing things on their own. That dog just hit that, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was crazy. You're a crazy dog. You're nuts. Hi. And uh, um, so that, that, makes, that makes for a really nice little community that you can go and get a little bits of necessities really easily. You don't have to go anywhere. But the Super Mini is really close, too. So with these prices and this lifestyle, um, this is <clears throat> both really interesting um, for those of you who are not actually looking at moving or not looking at houses like this. But honestly, for a lot of people who are looking at coming to Nicaragua, um, often this type of living actually, I think, should appeal far more often than people realize. Like nobody looks at really living more like a Nicaraguan partially because they, when it's seen, it's seen on the side of the highway or it's seen in a place like Leon or Granada, or you see middle of the city in Managua where it's not really where the bulk of people are living. It's just where you drive through as a tourist. And it gives, I think, a very false impression of what it's like in the country. This is how real people live. And it's actually pretty comfortable and pretty attractive. And this construction is not wood, right? This is, this is all, concrete and cinder block construction in almost all cases and lots of iron. These are very sturdy structures. These are things that are going to last a long time. You can see the wall of one of them right here. We're going to come up on it in a second. So this is, these are safe. These are, these have longevity. These are things you can invest in and pass on to children or sell when you are older. And you can see many different styles. A lot of these are really attractive with different stone and tile work, different iron work throughout them. Lots of beautiful foliage. We are heading into the dry season, so it's not quite as green as it is sometimes, but it's pretty green. And uh, well, we are early dry season. But very quiet, very affordable. I really like this house on the corner with the, the fake stone and the curved iron railing. I find all the designs very attractive here. Um, and, uh, and having a very small, uh, so air conditioning is, is, is split. What I was going to say is, uh, those split units tend to be able to cool down a room in a matter of just like one to two minutes. Uh, so it's, it's very rare that you want to air condition when you're not home. Um, and in many cases, you're not going to air condition if you're like in this part of the country, if you're in Leon, yes, probably going to want to air condition, but here you easily will, once you adapt, will be like, Oh, I don't need that. I just want the windows open. I just want, you know, I might need a fan middle of the day is going to be pretty warm, but most of the day is comfortable. And certainly here in Ciudad Sandino, it rarely gets so warm that sleeping at night is a problem. Um, it, it's, it's quite fresh. So, uh, so this kind of community being so typical is just an awesome example of what exists all throughout the country. You can get this in every part of Managua. You can get stuff like this in almost any city in the region. And this could be really good options for a lot of people. I know several of my viewers um, who, for whom this type of style. Oh, this is gorgeous here. I just love all the potted plants that they have so much and the ivy and the trees. That's so cute. Um, yes. And the dog is cute too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, being able to get something like this, in theory, you can buy with cash. A lot of Americans coming down would not need to finance uh, something like this. They could just buy outright, have an extremely low cost of living. Um, and these have really low maintenance costs because of the way they're constructed, because of their size, because they're modern. They don't have the upkeep that you're going to have on a colonial house or on a large house or on a private estate somewhere. They have, uh, especially here, right, with really good city water. And the city water is warm here, like really Really warm, not hot, you're not going to get burned on it, but it's surprisingly warm and really good pressure and all of those kinds of amenities. You can get food delivered really easily, but you can also take a taxi right into Managua really easily. 
It's an extremely convenient place to live. And yes, it is a gated community. It is not a kind of place where you're going to throw big parties. You're not going to have huge events happen in your neighborhood. It is a quiet place to come back home to for people who want their home to be quiet, to have the ability to escape, to have just a, a sanctuary to spend their time in, but want that access to the lifestyle of just, I want to walk out my door, get into a taxi or keep a car. Most of these, almost every house here has either a full garage or a, some kind of driveway um, spot for their cars. So you easily get your own car here uh, and um, quickly drive all over the place. And you can see that's, that's a mountain in the distance, right? There's beautiful stuff to go see. The lakefront is minutes away. Mountains are minutes away. Highway going to all kinds of great adventure locations minutes away. It is a really, really handy uh, location to launch from. And, and this stuff is just so overlooked. The number of expats who've ever even considered looking at stuff like this is, is like zero. And of course, some of these styles, like the one I'm looking at right now, you could, in theory, find one or two of these in the San Juan del Sur area. And actually, look at the size of their yard. There's a lot you could do with that that they haven't done yet. And in San Juan del Sur, once in a while, you'll find these. Of course, the price is down there way higher um, for, for good reason. And the selection is pretty small in general, uh, just because it's a, it's a small area. Um, but if you're in San Juan del Sur, and maybe that's where you want to be, um, if it is where you want to be, then, of course, nothing is going to be as good. But if it isn't particularly where you want to be, or it's only where you, you're thinking that those things are available, these beautiful houses, these beautiful communities, they exist other places too. Uh, and in many cases, they're actually going to be a lot more convenient for a lot of things. If your goal is just to go to the beach at San Juan del Sur, to be in San Juan del Sur, yes. Of course, being in San Juan del Sur will be best. Uh, I'm gonna turn around here. This is not the outside gate. So when I say that it's gated, you can see way down the road where that motorcycle just came through, a gate just came down. That's the actual guarded gate. This is the emergency gate they can close if for some reason that one is not manned. They can completely lock this one down and go to just the other gate on the other side. That is a glass window onto their yard. That is an interesting way to do that. I love this style for those who've I've pointed this out before. Rocks in the metal mesh is just a style I really like aesthetically. Uh, <laughs> um, but for, I think, an awful lot of people, and for me, certainly, something like this, having a house in a place like this is so central in the country because in San Juan del Sur, if you want to go to anywhere else, yes, Ometepe is not too far, Rivas is not too far, but the number of things that are not too far are very few. The border to Costa Rica is close, but the border takes hours to go over and there's a cost and then you're just in remote Costa Rica. Like if you have to do stuff with Costa Rica, which is very rare, then yes, that's a great location for that. But if you live in Nicaragua and are doing things in Nicaragua, then places like Managua or Hinotepe or uh, Granada or even Leon are much more central and have much more access to other things. And these kinds of communities are, can be so perfect for a beautiful, small, low maintenance, low cost home that you can make incredibly comfortable and incredibly safe and incredibly affordable and then just hop in your car or grab a taxi or from here literally you can walk out to the street and grab the bus if you wanted to and uh, i like this corner too well, I, I tend to like corner houses and off you can be on an adventure all over the country nearly every city in the country is just a few hours away and you can go do so many things so quickly and easily from here um, or from, from any number of, of centrally located cities. Um, and, and that's where I think that so many uh, expats just miss that opportunity to, to be central. Um, and they tend to, to put way too much investment into their house itself, thinking that they're going to basically stay home and never leave. And, uh, and, and maybe you are, but for a lot of people, once you get here, it's going to change. You're going to want to have uh, a very public life. You're going to want to go to the amazing restaurants. You're going to want to explore the country. You're going to want to get out and see other cities. You're going to want to get out and see how people live and, and make friends and do things. And once you're doing that, 
the things that you picture doing when you move to Nicaragua are probably going to change. So that is my tour of a gated community. I wanted to give you guys the prices and ideas and kind of range of what it's like and, and how nice it can be. This is just such a huge portion of how people live. And, and, and even if you're not thinking of coming to Nicaragua, I hope that this is really interesting to give a view into what real life is like here. When, when people say, oh, I grew up in Nicaragua, I, I live in Nicaragua, this is, I'm, I, I love it there. And people say, wow, it's not what I picture. This is what you should be picturing. This is so typical of, of what, what real people live like that, uh, uh, this is what should be popping into your mind far more often than anything else. Quiet and safe and interesting and central uh, and fresh air and warm and sunny for sure. <sighs> Thanks for joining me. Um, I'm going to have the throwback of our first day. So this is, this is actually good. I'm doing, oh, actually, I don't know what day it is. No, never mind. I'm going to do the throwback to our time in Nicaragua three years ago, and I'm going to do a little bit more update on what we did for the day. But please remember to like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Ask your questions. I want to know what you guys think about communities like this, houses like this, opportunities. Is this something that makes sense? Why does it make sense for you? Why doesn't it make sense for you? Um, was this interesting? What do you want to know about it? All that kind of stuff. Uh, share with your friends on social media. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee directly with the links down below. That really does help a lot. Uh, that goes directly to me. And other than that, uh, we're going to go on to the next stuff. Let's go. All right, I took the bus back in the middle of the afternoon, probably about four o'clock, and got back to Leon. Now, as I'm recording this, it looks bright and sunny, but I've got rolling thunder above me. It is a storm coming in for sure. I don't know how close it is, but I'm gonna be getting rain here in just a little bit. I did wanna add, really importantly, uh, I'm changing up how I'm do so, doing some of the throwbacks because as I went back, I realized that pretty much everything was missing three years ago. And so instead of just doing a throwback here on the day daily update for today in 2022. What I'm doing, where I'm missing things, I'm going back and actually uh, going into my Flickr feed, pulling out photos from the day in question, recreating what happened that day. Man, I love taking lots of photos and having a resource like Flickr to make this possible. Um, and I'm recreating vlog entries for those days all those years ago. So I've already done it for yesterday on the 3rd. I am doing one for today on the 4th. I think I'm going to do one for tomorrow on the 5th because I did go and find that I had uh, a one minute update that I did all those years ago and, and didn't make it available. And I also found part of a footage from the 3rd. I made that available. So if you guys notice some that appeared and that are actually filmed a long time ago, those were filmed three years ago, but I, they weren't meant to be like vlog updates like we do today or even like I was doing just before or we did the trip uh, or they weren't completed or whatever. So I did publish those because I don't want them to be lost and I want you guys to be able to share in them. But it's only about four minutes of, minutes of footage that I found for the entire trip so far. Uh, and I think that's all there is. Um, so I'm going back and I'm making videos on that. So for today's throwback, I'm not gonna go into the throwback for today. What I want you to do is just go watch the video that I'm gonna publish because I'm gonna make an entire video about that day three years ago, but I'm gonna make it today and publish it today for you guys. So that's how I'm going to handle that instead of attacking it on here. And I hope uh, that that turns out a lot better. Norm, we're going to go back to the throwbacks once we, once we have old videos to go back to. I think this is a way better system. Uh, and I really appreciate the fact that these old dates are going to be covered for the first time because it really was a great trip. And there was so much that happened and, and cool things to remember. And it's neat being able to share it with Alan and Rachel now and be like, remember when we did these things and really remember it, not just have a quick overview here on this channel. So that is the plan. Uh, this evening, I did a lot of work on videos because I'm way behind. The It took the camera all night just to do uploads. Not all through the night, but the entire evening until I went to bed. It was just the GoPro updating content from the weekend that I made for you guys. And I did what editing I could, but also Liesl and I are really getting into Lord of the Rings. And so I'm home with her. And uh, since I'm home early, we took advantage of the situation that we are watching uh, the Lord of the Rings. Now, we, we technically have been watching it, but we watched the Hobbit series, which is terrible. And now we're going back and watching the extended Lord of the Rings trilogy, which is awesome. That is the, the really, really good one uh, that 
uh, Liesl has seen, but it's been so long she can't remember it. Uh, and uh, it's, it's all the great cinematography and all the great filmmaking. And we talked about that too, how The Hobbit was just this train wreck of a studio press, pressuring people to, to pump something out, whether it was good or not, and how Lord of the Rings was this work of, of true love for the, for the, the original material. Look this. Uh, oh, this is one of the uh, school buses from Sutiyava, from one of the colegios out in Sutiyava. And oh, the wind has picked up. That storm is getting close. Uh, and, and how Lord of the Rings is just this amazing work of art and how it's such a, a passion project and how one was being rushed and the other had so much research and effort put into it and just how great it is. So we're really enjoying that. Tonight we watched the first one and we're watching the full extended version. So these are nearly four hours per episode. Uh, but we had a lot of fun. Like she enjoyed it. We had a good time. It takes us about six hours to watch it because of the number of interruptions we have. Constantly having to walk the dogs, make dinner and all that kind of stuff. That was our evening. Remember to like and subscribe. All that stuff. I will see all of you and go watch the fake throwback, the new. It probably, if you're watching this right when it comes out, it may not be published yet, but it will be in a few hours. I will see all of you tomorrow.